Right. So good day, class. So today we're going to start our lecture on the different tools you're going to use in project management. So the lec uh, our lecture the taken from the book that I wrote. So it's integrated construction project management. So that's me. So actually, this book is still scheduled for deliberation this coming November 11. So it's a compilation of what I've written when I was still a postgrad student at the University of Liverpool. So I think uh, this would be quite helpful. So let's go back. Defining the project scope and developing the work breakdown structure. So in simple terms class, the work breakdown structure is a list of the different activities that you're going to have. Okay. So in the field of construction, okay, there, I think it's already discussed in your building technology. Okay, so you have your layouting, staking, concreting works, um, steel works, uh, etc. So you're going to arrange them into different places. Okay, so as the project becomes more complicated, for example, you're building an airport, so does uh, your work breakdown structure. And that's the time that you're going to need different project scheduling tools. Okay, so the PM book or the project management body of knowledge confirms the relationship between project scope management and the work breakdown structure. So the project scope management knowledge area includes the processes we must perform to ensure that the project contains all the work and only the work required to complete the project. Project scope management relates to the monitoring and control of the work necessary to complete the project. So the project management body of knowledge or PM book standards require five processes to be undertaken for scope management. The first is planning the project scope. So, in simple terms, class, the project scope is the limitations of the project. So, uh, for example, are you going to build a one-story building with loft or are you going to build a one-story building only or are you building a multi-story structure? You have to define that. So, you're going to write that in the scope. So, this process requires expert judgment as well as the use of templates, forms, and standards. The output from this stage is a scope management plan. The second process is defining the scope to produce the statement of scope. So this details the deliverables, discusses the project approach, lists stakeholders, reduces estimates, and lists project controls. The third process is the creation of the WBS or the work breakdown structure, which is a hierarchical and graphical representation of all the work that needs to be completed in the life cycle of a project. So the WBS enables tasks to be assigned and be taken action on. Okay, so it's really important class that you have a good background in your building technology so that you already have an idea on the different stages before, during, and after construction so that you'll have a nice WBS or work breakdown structure. So although closely related in the PM book standards, the WBS is a separate form but is based on the scope statement. Once the WBS has been created, any updates to the scope statement should be made. The fourth process is scope verification, which involves gaining acceptance of the scope statement by the project stakeholders through detailed evaluation of the scope statement and WBS. The final process is scope control, which centers on change management strategies, managing variance in project scope, and managing scope creep. So, an essential step in the project planning process is to establish the task and activities that need to be performed to deliver a project's objectives. This requires that the project requirements be collected from the project stakeholders. So it means, class, that uh, during uh, the creation of the WBS or the work breakdown structure, 
it is necessary for you to talk to the different stakeholders of the project, especially if you're dealing with uh, large infrastructure uh, projects or buildings and not just the residential. Because if you're dealing only with the residential, all you have to do is talk with the owner, uh, to the client directly. But if you're already dealing with large projects, airports, malls, hospitals, and other mega projects, you have to identify the different stakeholders. Okay. So, which means that there should be clear communication between you and the different stakeholders for you to be able to create a work victim structure that is realistic and uh, fits the project itself. So, collecting requirements is just a process of determining documenting and manager stakeholder managing stakeholder needs and requirements to meet the project objectives essentially this is about agreeing to the activities and tasks that must be completed and identifying the resources required to deliver this task requirements also include conditions or capabilities that must be met by the project's objectives an important consideration to remember is that some requirements may be from external parties or suppliers. A key benefit of the requirements collection process is that it provides the basis for defining and managing the project scope. So a project a requirement is a feature that the project output must have, defined by project stakeholders. A project success is directly influenced by the level of stakeholder involvement in the discovery and the decomposition of needs into requirements. It's important, therefore, that care is taken in determining, documenting, and managing the requirements of the product, service, or result of the project. Project requirements needs to be identified, agreed to, analyzed, and recorded in enough detail to be measured after project execution begins. Requirements become the foundation of the work breakdown structure or your WBS. So the development of requirements begins with the analysis of the information contained in the project charter, the stakeholder register, and the stakeholder management plan. To facilitate planning and stakeholder engagement, requirements are often categorized into broad themes. For example, business and technical solutions. Requirements can then be grouped into additional subclassifications allowing for further refinement and detail. Project managers can collect requirements from stakeholders by a number of methods, including interviews and surveys. Requirements planning provides answers to some key questions including what task must be done to deliver the project aims. Who will do each task? How long will each task take? What resources, including people, materials, supplies, and equipment are required? Then how much will each task cost? Okay. So some of these items, tasks, they require experience because you don't usually get a good answer from books from this one. So, it's really important that you gain a lot of experience in construction, in the actual construction itself. Okay? So that you'll have a ballpark figure how long it will take, then how much it's going to cost. What is important at this stage is that the process is not concerned with the order in which each of the tasks will be delivered. The WBS does not consider scheduling. It's recovered in the next planning phase of scheduling. Okay. So the WBS class, scheduling there is not included. It's just the hierarchy of activities that you're going to have. But it's really important because from there, if you have a good work breakdown structure, then you could create a good um, analysis on the possible problems that you might encounter during the implementation of the project. So once the project requirements are collected, the project scope can be defined. Project scope is an important part of the project management plan. 
the primary purpose of the project scope is to ensure not only the required work, no more and no less, is performed to complete the project. The scope defines the boundaries of the project and helps stakeholders understand the amount of work and resources needed to complete a project. WBS is structure used to break down the project work to better manage the project scope and to define and communicate the scope. So the PM book or project management body of knowledge defines the WBS as a deliverable oriented and hierarchical decomposition of the work to be executed by the project team to accomplish the project objectives and create the required deliverables. So a WBS may be presented in a variety of formats. As long as the deliverables are organized into a hierarchy, okay, so we have here the figure one, these levels increase as activities are broken into more and more manageable pieces of work. So when project activities have been broken down into the smallest desired task or work packages, the WBS has achieved its most detailed level. For example, a work package in a residential construction project might be to paint walls and ceilings. A work package may take anywhere from a day to a week to several weeks to complete. Avoid making them so small as to be trivial or so large that it is composed of several deliverables. Some components in the WBS cannot be broken down to the level of work packages. As sufficient details about these deliverables are not available during the planning stage. Such components are called planning components and only estimates can be made. As a project progresses, more details become available for these components and they are then updated into the work work breakdown structure and decomposed into smaller activities. So the hierarchical level of the WBS means all stakeholders can see the work from a very high level. So that's the big picture. Down to the lowest level of detailing, providing clear understanding of the project scope. The deliverables identify what needs to be delivered and the work packages identify how this will be delivered. So this is an example structure of a WBS. So you can see if this is a project, of course it's if it's going to be divided into three phases, it will have different deliverables and each deliverables it has its own work package. So a key role of the WBS is to ensure a systematic approach to identifying the scope of the task and work packages that must be completed to deliver the project. One of the major causes of project failure and overruns is unforeseen tasks, which can have negative impacts on cost and time. So WBS can help to ensure that all the significant tasks and subtasks are identified in the early stages of the planning phase. So the WBS is the foundation for scope because it helps to pull the project together and provides a baseline for project scopes and the resources that are required. So the WBS provides a graphical representation of the project scope and the visualization enables project stakeholders to see and agree to the project scope more easily. So a critical learning point to remember is that what isn't in the WBS is outside of the project scope. So if there are budget and or time constraints, seeing the project scope uh, defined on the WBS allows an evaluation of the project scope to ensure it is delivered within these constraints. It is also essential tool to clarify stakeholders' understanding about the scope and outcomes and it can help to reach a common expectation of the project outcomes. Clarification of scope can minimize the risk of stakeholders having different perceptions about the same project outcomes. For example, the client may ask for a construction company to build a house. They may have visions of a palatial mansion 
with luxury fixtures and fittings, while the project manager may envisage a basic structure and the minimum quality products and materials. So, using a WBS ensures that key tasks and activities are identified, understood, and agreed to. So, projects are decomposed into smaller parts to facilitate planning for cost, time, and quality. So, it is essentially a divide-and-conquer approach to project scope and delivery. So, the creation of the WBS is a process of dividing project deliverables into smaller and more manageable units. So, the PM book defines a deliverable as any unique and verifiable product result or capability to perform a service that must be produced to complete the process fee or project. So, once tasks and activities are defined, identified, resources can be allocated to them. Resources are wide-ranging wide ranging and can, can include, of course, people, the human resources, facilities, and tools. So, resource needs should be determined with the project team and key stakeholders when developing the WBS. So that's especially true class when you're doing large projects. And documented in a resource management plan. So the research, resource management plan provides specific detail of the resource needed. For example, if people are identified as a resource, the resource management plan should detail the role description prerequisite skills, levels, and experience needed. So the WBS organizes the scope of the project and deliverable-oriented hierarchical structure. So the hierarchical levels of the WBS means you can see the work from a very high level. So the big picture drawn to the lowest level of the detail providing clear understanding of the project scope. The WBS can be used throughout the life of the project as a baseline for project reporting. So in practice, scope changes are one of the common reasons for project failure. So especially class if you're, um, for example, in residential buildings wherein the client always changes uh, his or her mind on a lot of things, okay? so which means that the project scope also changes so, it often results to project failure because you'll already be um, going beyond the time and budget allotted. So, it's really important that at the beginning class that you really find a way to talk to the client. Okay? Then, you detail everything in the contract so that if there are any changes in the project scope, um, it could be more manageable. So, despite the importance of the WBS, unfortunately, many projects, project managers still do not use this or they fail to use them uh, properly. For example, it's common practice for project managers to define projects from schedule instead from a well-defined scope and work breakdown structure. So, when you become architect someday class, I want you to become the kind of project manager that decides and uses the WBS. Okay? If you have a well-defined work breakdown structure, then your project is less likely to fail. Because if you're just using the schedule, there may be a lot of unforeseen tasks that you have not seen. But if in the WBS, you have already uh, predicted the schedule and the work packages, then you already have a general view okay, of the entire project from start to finish. Okay? So, I'll end my lecture with that class. So, this is for our week one in our the final term for our construction management uh, subject. So if you have any further questions or clarifications, I'll be scheduling a 
synchronous class for it. Okay, so stay safe class and see you next meeting.